Majesty. Oh, be unto me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Kora Bashataka. Paraboko Seke Bragadashika. Almighty, blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. your name thank you my father in Jesus name we worship clap your hands for Jesus amen Micah 7 verse 8 Rejoice not against me, O my enemies For if I fall Micah 7 8 I shall arise when I sit in darkness The Lord shall be a light unto me Amen That's a very deep verse of scripture And it's very heavy And if we're going to consider that old verse of scripture Then we may need weeks to just look into that verse. We are going to take the verse, the very first phrase, rejoice not O my enemy. We are going to take that phrase first and that's what we are going to dwell on as a teaching. Cutting short your enemy's joy. Cutting short your enemy's joy. Your enemies may have the first say, but they don't have the last say. Satan may include you, but he can't conclude you. In life, if you have eminence, get ready for enemies. Once you are eminent, then there will be enemies. No matter how good you are, how nice you are, how kind you are, there are enemies. As a matter of fact, there are people who don't like you, but they don't know yet why they don't like you. They are still trying to figure out why they don't like you okay so enemies are normal genesis 14 verse 20 abraham god has delivered your enemies into your hand genesis 22 17 in blessing i will bless you in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and the sand upon the seashore and i see shall possess the gate of his enemy genesis 49 verse 8 judah thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise thy leg shall be on the neck of your enemies exodus 22 20, 23 22 it says god will be an enemy to your enemy an adversary to your adversary in numbers chapter 10 verse 35 psalm chapter 68 verse 1 it was a double phrase the phrase and statement was made by moses but repeated by david david most of the statements david made were quotations that he got from the patriarchs before him so in Numbers 10, 35, Psalm 68, 1, let God arise and let what? His enemies be scattered. 
the bible says in deuteronomy 28 verse 7 deuteronomy 28 verse 25 the bible says that so shall the lord cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face they shall come in one way and they shall live in seven ways when an enemy comes in one way and lives in seven ways it means the enemy will not live complete it will start to live in seven ways means your head takes one route your hands take another route your body take a so anyone that ganks up against you shall be scattered yeah. psalm chapter 18 verse 3 focus themselves that they will not eat that is how out dedicated and addicted to your downfall your enemies are when you see you see the day god opens your eyes to see the ploy and ploy is not to nobody tell you to pray even when people stop praying you keep praying when they tell you it's okay you say it's not okay what is fighting me is strong but now that people are on fire it's why others, others are getting weak it's like noah when the whole world was sinning noah was righteous when the world stopped sinning noah started sinning when the whole world was sinning noah was righteous in fact it was the righteousness that god found genesis chapter 6 the bible said god noah found grace in the sight of god so noah was not sinning when the world was sinning when the whole world has been destroyed there was nobody to sin noah started sinning when the world was lukewarm you were on fire now that everybody is getting on fire you are becoming lukewarm An expectation now don't forget write this down every enemy has an expectation concerning you every enemy has an expectation concerning you every enemy has an expectation concerning you there's something the enemy expects number two no enemy has a good expectation concerning you number one they have an expectation number two none of the expectation is good the expectations they have concerning you are expectations that are negative very very negative the expectation that they have concerning you is negative number three the expectation they have concerning you can be frustrated you can stand on the word of god and frustrate the expectation god can take you to a level like he took esther in our days in esther chapter 9 verse 5 the bible said god put them that they would do whatsoever they like to those that hated them god can get to that point where he will place you at the level where you do what you like that's what he said concerning the man called saul he said when all these signs shall come upon you first samuel chapter 10 i believe from verse 7 8 down when all these signs shall come upon you you shall do as occasion serve you as occasion serve you meaning you shall do whatever you like he said because the lord is with thee when this sign shall come upon you thou shalt do as occasion serve you for the lord is with thee the presence of god god is with you you shall do as occasion serve you there are people today who have a mouth to sing a mouth to shout their voice is amplified because god is with them thou shalt do as occasion serve you enter anywhere do what you want so long as under, under god do what you want because god is with you amen somebody met jesus one night they called the man nicodemus nicodemus those are names of ninth people nicodemus if that's your name god bless you the ninth man nicodemus he met jesus at ninth and the reason he went to jesus at nine because he was one of the leaders of the synagogue and he said something profound in john chapter 3 from verse 2 down no man can do these great signs except god be with him nicodemus acknowledged the fact that the manifestation of this grace is on the platform of divine presence It's when god is with a person that this thing happens okay no man can do the signs except god be with him mm. so the roots and the platform for signs and wonders is god be with me so i began to study how can i make god be with me i went to john chapter 8 verse 29 he that sent me is with me the father has not left me alone because i always do the things that pleases him okay so if god must be with me 
I must always do the things that pleases him. How can I do the things that please him? Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things for Hebrews 11, 1 to 6. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God. So that things which we see. We are not made of things which do appear by faith. Abel of more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which you obtain the witness that he was righteous. Though he been dead, God testifying of his gifts. He been dead, yet speak it. By faith, in accord with God. Bible says he was not found because God took him. Before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Oh, so if I must please God, I must have faith. Is that all I need to please God? No. Romans chapter 8 verse 8. For they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay. So if I must please God, I must walk in faith and walk in the spirit. Because God, you cannot assess God in the flesh. God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit. And it takes you becoming a spirit man to assess God. If you want to assess God in the flesh, you will keep revolving and keep struggling. But once you want to assess God, you must switch to the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 9. Romans 8 9. He that has not the spirit of God is not of him. The spirit of God is the signature of God. The Spirit of God is the signature of God. So when you have the Spirit of God, you are of God. The Spirit of God is the seal. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, with which you have been sealed until the day of redemption. When you get you buy something that is authentic, that is authentic, it is sealed. Okay? One of the reasons you seal things is for preservation. Is that true? Is that true? For preservation for protection the seal it is sealed glory to god i said glory to god so how do i get to that point when my enemies you know when my there's nothing i like like when the enemies think it's over when they are they are almost rejoicing when they are almost concluding on you and God gives them a surprise. One of the most exciting things about life is to be unpredictable. When people do not have an idea about your rising, you become like a cat with nine lives. Am I talking to somebody here? Throw a cat, it will never land on its back. It will avoid landing on its back. There are people that can never land on their back. There's a covenant on their head. To fight them is to fight God. Am I talking to somebody here? It's not by the will of their flesh, but by God that has showed them love. When the enemies are rejoicing. You see, that, but the generation we are in now, one of the biggest problems of this generation is that we give out too much information. Everything about our life is, is what exposes us. Too much information about yourself. Too much information. Your birthday that should take people by surprise. From one month, you start announcing it. Birthday loading. Birthday loading. You, you just announce, and they are not even aware to make matters worse. Nine days to go. Are you celebrating an obituary? Nine days more. All the gifts monetize them. Monetize the gift. Birthday, you do that, and you are so looking forward to it. Announcing it. You are traveling, you announce it. You are getting married, you announce it. And people getting married these days marriage is now like a problem when somebody tells you his wedding is coming up you, you almost have high blood pressure somebody sent me date and sent me accounts i said i don't understand <laughs> sent me a date of wedding and sent me account number you see my wedding is coming up to something. in those days when they say wedding is to attend it's not account send me wedding and send me address let me send somebody there to attend today it has become an harassment and I always tell people, when people are getting married, don't give them money. Give them money after wedding. Don't give them money before marriage. Don't encourage people into stupidity. If you are begging for money to marry, you are not qualified to marry. Forget this story. You are not qualified to marry. If you are begging for money to marry, you are not qualified to marry. That's the truth. I'm telling you out of experience. If you give them money for marriage, you will give them money to take care of their children. 
you give them money to feed their children you will pay school fees that is the truth God gave Adam work before he gave him wife Turn the garden when there was a garden he now says sleep I'll give you a woman today it has become an upside down arrangement people want wife before work it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that so you must first of all understand the, the, the meaning of what faith is amen amen somebody say somebody has to get wife you know when somebody now find the wife that's where favor he now obtain favor of the lord you don't understand bible you don't understand bible listen the bible this this say either is looking for a wife he didn't say that he's looking for a wife we'll find a good thing he said that has already already it's a concluded matter are you for what i'm talking about and, and he didn't say he that is looking for a partner so it's not every woman that's a good thing because not every woman is a wife bible did say that look for a partner or either finds a partner find a good thing no either find a wife so don't just sit down the lady and be shouting you are a good thing you are a good thing if you're not a wife material you're a bad thing you're not a good thing that's what the bible says he that find it <laughs> you must be a wife and if you ask a lot of people why they are getting married now so much liability they want a mother that can take care of them they want a man oh, all their siblings are suffering they want a mother that can take care of their sibling oh they have a, their father has a building they want a man that can complete it oh their mother's business you don't need a man you need a bank marriage central bank because you don't need a husband you need a bank all those things you are saying i'm telling you the truth you need a bank what do you bring to the table what do you bring someone said to me daddy i want to tell you something i want somebody the kind of man she said pray for me to get married i was about to lay hands on the outside i said you want to be the kind of man i want to marry I, said, yeah. I didn't know that i have to ask i thought i would just pray he said ask me i said okay he said okay hmm. from the way she balanced I, I knew she can't marry i don't knew she can't marry you want to tell me you want to marry and you balance like this to give description i was listening he said he has to be very tall i said okay and she's very short too what so she, says she has to be tall he has to have good shape i don't like men that are too fat i was looking at who was talking so and she was saying that and he has to be good looking papa he has to be good looking i said okay she was giving all the qualities said everything and the rest i said okay that description you just gave now is for married men it's not for single men somebody has made them that way they met a woman that that all those things the description you are giving is for finished product those who they are married that's the truth you think if there is a man like that you will meet him available eh? they would have collected him stop looking for what does not exist stop looking for things that don't exist you want this you want that's how some young men want too they want a woman that's like this you know you see young man in his late 40s he's not married early 50s why he wants a woman like this like this like this he wants somebody prim and proper and all the qualities he's talking about no young girl has it no young girl has it it's only a married woman and the married woman had it after going through process you want a girl that's very respectful a girl that will not look at any other man a girl that will focus on you alone are you jesus <laughs> are you jesus <laughs> the 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 loyalty some young men expect even christ does not demand such loyalty don't talk to anybody don't greet anybody if anybody greets you don't answer uh -uh. even jesus christ does not say that don't talk to anybody if they greet you don't answer if anybody give you money reject it eh? where's the place of favor <laughs> where's the if i reject money somebody give me how is god answering my pastor's prayer where's the place of favor they give you anything return it eh? return it don't collect if anybody say they want to help you tell them you are not interested eh? for who <laughs> praise god but, but you know that's what we have nowadays crazy and i mean when i see people do that i just laugh i say they will grow they will grow one of my children was crying crying called me and she was crying crying for like two minutes when she finished crying i said hey i don't have energy for this. what is it he left me i said it's okay you'll be fine you'll be fine god bless you and i hung up the phone and he sent the message that you don't even care 
I said, no, I care. You will grow. Don't worry, you will grow. Your problem is immaturity. When you grow, you understand life better. Amen? No, you don't carry emotion into courtship. No, you leave it for marriage. Don't carry emotion into courtship. Don't carry all those love, love. You want to kill yourself. Any man that is doing that is not yet married. Calling somebody 20 times is because you have no school fees to pay. When there are children and school fees, you are cracking your head. You, you, two days you have not called and you are not aware. <laughs> you can't even remember that you have not called for two days. You are cracking your head for school fees. You are cracking your head for rent. And your wife says, ah, you are not coming. Ah! Only me, I will pay rent. I will still call you on top. Ah! For what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. When the mama said to me, said, for the past three days, you have not told me you love me. I said, because since the last time I said it, I have not changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to be renewing it. The last one I told you, just hold that one, hold that one, and just believe that one I said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. How do I frustrate my enemies so that their joy can be cut short? Number one, stay close to God. Stay close to God. Stay close. Your proximity with God is what determines your solidity on earth. Your proximity with God determines your solidity on earth. John, James, sorry, James 4 verse 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God. Anytime you want God to be close to you, be close to him. You want to feel God's presence in your life. James 4 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. As you are, as you are getting that close to him. You, to stay close to God is to be void and empty of satanic deposits. You are empty. John 14 verse 30 Jesus said the prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in me imagine a mortal he could make that declaration that he has nothing in me he has nothing there's no property that he has in me the prince of this world cometh he said I know he's coming that, that spirit that hit him on the cross that was death death hit him death did not hit him because he, he sinned death hit him because he carried the sins of people but for him he was blameless I know he has nothing in me. Draw near to God. Be close to God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. It said, draw near to him with a true heart. A true heart. And that's why you must ask yourself daily. Are you close to God? How close are you to God? How close are you to God? How close are you to God? Moses saw the glory of God afar off. He always knew about God. He always knew about God. The mother raised him up in the act of Israel. Even in Egypt, all the mother taught him was the lifestyle of Israel. Even in Egypt, in Acts chapter 7, verse 31, the Bible says he saw it afar off and he drew near. How close are you to God? How close are you to God? Acts 7 31. How close are you to God? You have to be close to God. You want your enemies to be frustrated continually. You want to win every single fight that comes your way. Then you must understand the place of proximity with God. How close are you to God? What does it take to be close to God? How do I get close to God? Number one, how do I get close to God? Devotion. Devotion. Devotion is your
Holy one. I was walking around him. I was praying in tongues, praying in tongues. I prayed for the wife. I came back. He was sitting there, sweat everywhere. Holy one. Ah. 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 I was looking at him. I was praying. I was going out. I was looking at him. At least an average of two, three hours on the spot. I just sat there thinking of my life. Before, before that time, before that time, everyone would say, Ah, no, he can pray. Ah, he can pray. 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 When I got there, I started thinking, I see one spot, Uluwa, two hours. We are not competing, but we can be challenged. Nobody's competing with anybody, but you can challenge. You can't see somebody on fire and he says, yeah, let him be doing his own. Everybody be doing your own. I'm doing my own. Let everybody, I can't kill myself or anything. I'll be doing my own. Everybody doing their own. When it comes to the things of the spirit, somebody's on fire. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. If you have to be like him, kill yourself. Are you following me? Your pastor will stand on the altar in one service. 50 scriptures, 70 scriptures, 100 scriptures. Does he have their head? Okay, what is wrong? This Sunday, I say open to. Next Sunday, open to. The other will turn to. Won't you get home? I say this thing they are telling me to turn to. Open to, turn to. I want to know it. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following me? On fire! Be challenged. Be inspired. Be inspired. Somebody should be able to challenge you. But it has to be on the platform of your devotion. Devotion. You are in Bible study, you don't miss it. You don't miss it. You are in solution service, you don't miss it. You are anything you make up your mind to achieve in life, you can achieve. Ah, uh, see, we grew up and there was one boy that wanted to be a herbalist. He was small, though. that was his. He said he wanted to be flying. And I said, we'll be looking at him then. He said he wants to be flying, that he wants to have power so he can vanish, appear, just appear in your room like this pack all your money pack before you are coming you just disappear <laughs> he wanted such things one time i saw him in germany i saw him wearing regalia with a retinue of white people following him that was his dream to be a balance, powerful one and he has achieved it i saw him with people, so he greeted me I, I saw him with funny dress but that he looks old and it's my age mate he looks old gray and fat and why are you like this? <laughs> I say we passed on now. Now wow. <laughs> I was just looking at him. I said, this guy he achieved his dream, herbalist. <laughs> Many of you think that spirituality is what? You think it's easy? Spirituality is discipline and determination. You think it's easy to fly? To be a witch? To fly? Oh yeah, oh, yeah fly, fly now fly if you think it's easy to fly to become a witch to fly it is work it is work people are walking on their two legs they have problem you now suspend yourself in the air you say you are flying fly when you land you tell us what you saw there <laughs> it's take determination there are people you see who have extra powers in the occultic world ask them the price they pay ask them ask them them i remember them when we were in man of war how many of you passed through man of war and boy scout man of war so you see all those lights they are lying to us as a strong man they, if you if you are, you are you are on the parade and they fly pet you don't move you will, you will blind <laughs> i remember then they'll take us to serious forest mosquito bah! yeah man <laughs> i remember one time they took me somewhere my mother didn't know where i went i came out with swollen i what happened b a bee stung my face I was there the bee was was eating me up stinging me you are, as a man you don't you don't touch it you are a man you are a man i left there with as a man with a swollen eye <laughs> swollen eye they said that's discipline that's discipline and i told our leader there i said see my eyes said, yes this is a sign you are a man when i got home my mother reminded me that i was a boy caress lap where are you coming from with this eye Ooh, boy. where did you go <laughs> praise the lord the real act of discipline is spiritual exercise spiritual exercise. when your back wants to rest your spirit says it's time to pray consistency 
is the currency of the spirit can i hear a loud amen acts chapter 5 verse 42 the disciples were in the temple daily somebody said daily daily your daily devotion is what culminates into your destiny your daily devotion is what culminates into your destiny your daily devotion is what culminates into your destiny so for you to stay close to god you must understand the act of devotion number two you must understand the act of service serving the word of the lord declares in job 36 11 if they shall wait and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3 it talks about that we shall fear him love him serve him deuteronomy chapter 6 love him fear him 6 verse 13 love him fear him the reason you are saved is to serve him so you are saved to serve acts 8 um, exodus 8 1 exodus 8 20 exodus 9 1 let my people go that they may serve me exodus 9 to 13 let my people go that they may serve me. exodus 10 3 let my people go so god wants you to be released to serve how do you serve god you serve god with your time you serve god with your resources you serve god with your ideas you serve god with your contact your time your resources your contact your ideas your money praise god serve with your time your everything about you serve god with it how can somebody be in a church and he's not in a department he said no me i don't like i don't like problem i don't like problem and i'm just coming to church i want to serve my god quietly and go to heaven quietly i'm sorry you are serving satan quietly i may go to hell quietly because you cannot be with god and not serve and not serve she said no me i just want to be coming quietly to church and just go like that god said there is a blessing that is reserved only for those who who what serve 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 and that's what god expects of every one of us that we should be servants we should be seven if anyone wants to be great is it john chapter 12 verse 26 that jesus said if any man serve him with my, with my father honor that where he is where i am there he will be also if any man serve let him follow me and where i am also my servant will be if any man serve me him will my father honor there is nothing that commands honor like service lovingly are you following me Sir, i never thought in this life that any what is that a pastor will now be blessed and now no i loved god with passion i remember the first time there, listen this is not to mock anybody anybody everybody has a beginning i remember the first time i went to preach and they decided to appreciate me three people gathered and gave me this small nylon bag of appreciation after preaching it was pumpkin you know pumpkin leaf you know pumpkin there's something called pump you know pumpkin the soft huh oh, yeah that's a local native name ugu but it's pumpkin come on be posh pumpkin <laughs> that's what they gave me as thank you as they call it honorarium to appreciate me they gave me i went to preach before i got home it melted so i was looking for the offering it has melted second time they blessed me it was four people that gathered they wrapped the thing wrap it wrap it wrap it it took me almost three minutes to open all the wrap thing they gathered around you know those days this one we appreciate you all the elders will come you are a blessing to us they will now pray for you the next one will come that this message you gave to us mm, it touched me it touched me this will cry after they finish crying they give me the gift I, w I went to where i was staying i was loosening 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 ah, ah. later i could feel it was a bottle when i opened it fanta amen praise the lord fanta i was excited i was even shocked that they gave me some ah, they gave me something for preaching why but i was just loving god i was just following god i never knew loving god and following god not today people call, enter ministry and they're looking they're they are looking for yet they are selecting where they should 
say, no, I don't have calling for village. I don't have calling for village. Say, no, say, no. Because I know what I saw. I saw you pay. Clear. Very clear. Very clear. But God told me that my, my ministry is for Europe. But I was ready. Loving and serving. Serving and following excitedly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Following excitedly. But today, that's the problem we have today. Everybody wants to appear before their time. Somebody's a gospel artist and has released just two records or two singles or two albums or whatever it is. And expect to be treated like a VIP in a program. They must come and carry you with a car. They must give you protocol. If you see it, it is glory to God. But that should not be what you are ministering. Minister because you love God. If you have to enter Okada, enter the Okada. Go there and minister. Your life will not always be like that. Go there. I used to have an Okada. It was a roadmaster. You know roadmaster? Those big Okada. Then if I finish preaching, someone will now walk, walk to me. Man of God, you are a blessing to us. They'll be looking around. You are a blessing. They'll now squeeze one thing and put in your hand. You are a blessing. We'll see you. Okay? We'll see you. We'll come and see you. See, I'm waiting till now. Many have not seen. Amen. Excited. I was going somewhere to preach and bam, bam. In Lagos, where could pack up? I job better Molwe. Entered Molwe. I got to the bus stop there. I saw one small, then it was this lady's bike. I entered the lady's bike. The ushers and protocols were outside waiting for the car that would bring me. I came down from the car. I said, ah, how are you? He said, fine, fine. Enter, 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 enter. They were looking around. As well as your pastor. I said, what's your business with our pastor? Enter, enter. You no, know, as this can be guest speaker for what? No, no. They say enter, enter. I say I want to see your pastor. Say, enter inside now. You are blocking people. Enter. So I waited back. They told the protocol to mark me. I don't want to enter. Maybe I want to do something. They should mark me. They didn't know I was guest speaker. Guest speaker that came up from ladies' bike. That's what brought me. I came down from there because the vehicle stopped. Gospel must be preached. And after a while, the pastor came. Ah, man of God, what's happened? Where's, where's the car? I said, car. Which car? Cars. Bro, stop there. I enter Molo. Molo. Enter bus stop. Bus stop. We enter. Let this back. We did now. We go preach the preach. <laughs> and the man said, okay. And all the protocols here. Yeah. Is the one? Hey, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I looked at them and I felt bad. Not bad because of what they did to me. I just imagined them doing it to others by leading them to the church because they don't have anything today. If you are saying sorry to me, what, what are you saying about? To other people because you feel they have nothing now so you despise them who has despised the days of little beginning he says shall see the plummet in the hand of zerubbabel that's the truth god knows huh? and this is still me i've not changed there's nothing like big pastor no it's only god that is big if i'm going to minister in my plane everybody traveling with me enter the plane there's nothing like man of god fly people go by road what nonsense is that all of us let's sit down there let's everybody enter in life you must get to that point when you understand that there's nothing in this world nothing jesus one day was washing people's feet you know why he said i'm teaching you what to do i tell people i say you see why i give all these people opportunity i'm teaching them that when they become great tomorrow they should give somebody opportunity nothing not in this world i remember the first time i traveled abroad and i entered the plane first time abroad plane no i knelt down by my seat plane the person sitting by me was waiting okay stand up now i was thanking god thank you jesus thank you my lord whatever i am now it is by your inside plane if you don't answer what the plane is, you should know that economy, you don't have too much allowance. So the guy was wanting to go inside. I knew that. Many are dying. Many are perishing. But I appreciated him. I said, me. Enter plane. I'm going to preach. Jesus, thank you. I landed at the airport. I knelt down publicly. I said, Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. I went there to minister. 
I ministered, came back, protocols and all. He came to pick me, they were following me. I saw up to like three cars, I was confused. I said, ah, what's the matter? They said to escort. I said, hey, me. I laid down by the car. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. I sat in the car, I went there, I came back. Then the first time somebody said, okay, enter what they call a business class. I, the lady said, I know you are a pastor. I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going. Say, no, 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 no. There are two vacant seats in the business class. Sit down here. I said, me. I should, it was first class, actually. I should fly first class. I said, yes. I laid down by the plane. Jesus. Thank you. Me, that when I carried my Bible, people were laughing at me. Because they felt I didn't need to carry the Bible. I come from a family that's privileged. My father is rich. My mother is rich. So why are you preaching? Because they felt the preaching was for people who are broke, who are poor, who are suffering. So why? Your father asked me, what are you looking for? I said, I'm not preaching because of, I love Jesus. I remember in town, somewhere, they used to call that place Gola Heights. Those of you in Awochi know what I'm talking about. Gola Heights. I remember somebody had my trouser because he printed posters for me and I didn't pay. He traced me to Awochi from Bini. Trace me. How that guy knew I was in Awochi till now, I don't know. There was no GSM at that time. So now Gola, he broke. No be with this, no be with this, no be with this. Is this not <laughs> Help me? You must pay for the I did that program and I finished. God, it was in town. In ICE then, not the feed, the classroom. God told me, don't take an offering. I didn't take no offering. I finished the program. And blocks me, held my trousers. People got that. You must pay. You must pay. So one of them said, are you from this place? I said, yes, who is your father? I mentioned my father's name. Everybody shock. Is your father? Is your father? One by one, they started leaving the guy. Each of them could tell. This one say, the father helped my mother. I gave my mother this. The father did this. The father every testimony of what my father did for them. They say, Yo, you see, that's your father. You don't have money to pay for poster. My father there wasn't saved. He wasn't born again so he didn't he didn't understand what i meant by saying god said that i should preach how but i was just loving god i was just serving him are you following me i remember the first car i had my father gave me a car mazda 626 red i was worshiping god one day and the voice of god said do you love me i say yes give out this car that was when my father concluded that my madness was confirmed I had the voice of God to go and give the car. I went out. I gave the pastor the car. My father said, where's your car? Um, Holy Spirit said, I should give the car. Uh, where? Where did you see him? Holy Spirit. He spoke to me. Uh, how? I heard him. Why am I not hearing him? Give out the car. Praise the Lord. But today, the Christianity I see now, listen, the Christianity I see in the life of people, I shake my head. People will fast and pray because of what they are looking for. People will become minister. People are angry. I'm not getting money. See where they put me. Money is not coming. They're not rubbish. Church such people, no matter what they do in life, they don't go far because their motive is wrong. And today God has blessed me. That thing is still in me. It has not changed. That nature. Everyone close to me can tell you. It's still inside me. It has not changed. Put food on the ground. I will sit on the ground. I will eat on the ground. Put it on the stool. I will sit on the stool. It nothing has changed. We went to London, myself and the whole family. And they gave us a place to stay. Two rooms. One sitting room. And we are eight, about eight. I told all the guests to enter a room. I told my man that she had to enter a room. I carried um, blankets put on the ground. This was last two years or so. And I was sleeping there. I'll finish, come back, lie down there, go to go and preach, come back, lie down there. And my wife said, No, come to the bed. I said, No, now. You push your head, relax. I didn't feel nothing. If I didn't tell you now, will you know? It doesn't mean anything to you. Now you are so selective. You have become so proud. And you have not even started, though. You have become so proud, so arrogant. So arrogant. This city where Papa is dressing, long sleeve and shirt. Ah -ah. Very casual. What is this now? He should dress, talking, and put bed 
gets on his stomach like village headmaster. Someone said to me, why you just wear this shirt and, and trousers? You are looking so poor. You are looking not natural. I said, is it your, your cloth? Is it your body? Is it your dressing? Leave me, I'm fine. I'm fine. I should tie my neck like, like somebody on suicide mission. Tie my neck with tie. <laughs> Listen to me. If you must go far in life, love him and serve him. Remove your mind from all this nonsense. I know many pastors that will never do well. Whether they are general of Asia, whether they are working with ministries, their heart is bad. Their work with God is based on achievement. What has come in, what has not come in. No. But I know the ones I can tell this one will go far. They are careless. They are not conscious of what they are getting. Am I communicating here? Is Pastor Moses here? Do they, do, you, do they pay me in this church? Eh? I'm the overseer of this church. I'm not on salary. I'm the general overseer. Okay? Eh. They don't pay me. But they take from me. Oh. Take a lot. The reason they don't pay me is because they can't pay me. The day they pay me, then my, 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 my finances will revolve around that salary. But I look up to the he is where comment my help. Your problem is that you are conscious of what you want from God. Look at you. Why, why are you downcast? I've been believing God for finances. Finance didn't come. That's why you are that's why you are feeling this way. I've been believing God that that God should give me a partner. God has not given. That's why you are feeling this way. Can I show you people who are believing God to be alive for the next day? That when they see that next day, they say, Ah, I made it for Friday. Jesus, one more day. One more day, one more day, one more day. I had a son that would come to this place, he would complain, 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 complain. So one day we went somewhere, he flew to that African country. So I called one of my sons there. I said, Can we go to any hospital emergency ward? I see unit. Let me just, I want to drop some money, small money for one or two people. That's the way you can enter such a place. I said, I want to drop small money. As we entered there, I took him before we came out. He Handkerchief was soaked. He saw people's leg. He saw people's mouth like that. And he said, like that for four or five days. Like that. It doesn't close. The mouth cannot close. Syringe. We saw a man. They would blend food. We would use syringe and draw the food and put the food in a pipe. It can't pass through his mouth. They would blend it. Blend. You know, blender? They would blend it. He would draw it with a syringe and would put on the pipe and bend the pipe. The food will enter. He would blend again and they saw us and did like this they greeted he still has hope that one day it will be better and you you have your legs you have your hand you have your mouth and you say you are angry with god because you don't have money because um, somebody offended you because somebody have you seen have you seen have you seen people who are appreciative a man in america told me he said i came to Auchi to see you he said, but I've already paid for this. He said, he has bought his coffin. He has prepared, he has written his burial. He said, because the people in America know that he's not coming back. But he said, at least let him step into the place of a man of God who he believes before he will go. That he's ready to go because they give him a report that he has this to live. I saw a man who knew he was about to die and was smiling. He was smiling. He said, I just said, let me come and worship God. Because next few days I looked at him with anger in my system. I said, because of this kind of preparedness, God said I should tell you he has added 60 more years to your life. Till today, this was 2018. Till today, he's still alive. Hear me, child of God. He said, How can you strive with your maker? Sometimes God will look at you when you are complaining. Devil will smile. You know why? God remembered overnight when they came battling for your soul. When they throw an arrow that you will not wake up, he shielded it. And you woke up, you look around, you are crying. I can't even pray, I'm not going to church. Evil smiles. He said, I just shielded him from death last night. There was an accident. The vehicle, that accident was concluded to take you. You came out without a scratch. And you come out, you stand there. 
everybody died except me to you is very normal but if only you know that was your end but god said it's not your time when you remember these acts of god you remember the preservations of god then you understand that what, what what the psalmist meant when he said what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him that was maybe a little lower than elohim a little lower than elohim who are you who are you what what is special about you that god is preserving you what is special what is special about your life that god is keeping you alive and yet you are angry you are offended you are provoked you are offended at god and god looks at you and looks at you i have seen battles in my life and i'll tell you the truth no matter the battles i see the only time i get broken at all is when i consider the wickedness of heart of a man that's the reason that breaks me when i sit back and consider that's the reason that breaks me i'm like can people be this wicked can people be this wicked that's the reason that breaks me i've seen betrayer i've seen backstab i've given somebody a car and as best was walking out of where he took the car he was planning against me i've seen betrayer I've seen all kinds of betrayal all kinds of backstab that i still help people today is because i love jesus I've, I've gotten many reasons to just tell everybody just go to your way i'm not interested i've seen and god told me clearly the proof of your work with me is your ability to forgive am i talking to somebody here yeah? your ability to forgive you will see battles in life but your love for god is what carries you on You are, seeing, you are seeing you are hungry there are people that have everything you can think of a young girl wrote a long episode somebody sent it to me and i read it the father was a very wealthy man but the father was sick and he died of covid the father was kept in the room nobody could touch him because they don't want to be infected she said i sat down and she said she sat down and watched her father die with all the money he had no help no remedy that then she saw how useless material things are but the problem now is that is where you are now basing your christianity on look at my life have i achieved anything and when you talk like that you are trying to equate yourself with people who have cars who have houses do i have anything look at my life do i have anything what do i have and i'm sad i'm serving jesus what a, what a shame what a shame what a shame You are equating that and there are people that have that in and they have a deadly disease that money cannot cure and there you are there healthy and well and your only anger at god is that he has not given you this or given you that or given you this